We're joined now by McKinney North soccer coaches, Lance Lovell and Manuel Mendiola. Guys, welcome back to Sports Talk. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Well, it's good to have you here. Uh, Coach Lovell, let's talk a little bit about uh, before the season started, you'd had all fall to practice and get people, the new people blended in and all that. Yes. Uh, who were the people you were looking on or thought would be able to, to lead the team this year? Well, obviously the, the captains. Uh, Olivia Dittmer and Sabrina Martineau did an outstanding job of uh, rallying the troops, so to speak. Uh, but there's others out there as well that, uh, that stepped up to lead that are, didn't have the captain's band and uh, those like... Uh, Michaela White, you know, she really stepped up and, and helped with, uh, you know, coordinating the defense and, and instructing when she needed to and being the voice back there in the back. So those three really primarily, are, and, and Catherine Zamora really stepped in as well and helped out uh, with the leadership. Now, Coach Mendiola, who were some of the people as you were coming into this season you were expecting to really contribute? Um, I was mostly looking at the returning uh, players from uh, varsity last year, and uh, but also, you know, in general, the seniors. I wanted, you know, that senior group me being my first year with them, and obviously my only year since now they're graduating. Uh, I wanted them to step up and and, and do their part. Uh, I have no regrets in the season. So, now, uh, Coach Lovell, you started out, uh, I think, uh, in the Berkner Ice Bowl tournament. Yes, and uh, you had a couple interesting matchups. You beat JJ Pierce. All right. J.J. Pierce was a pre-district game, just a, oh, just a single game. Uh, we beat J.J. Pierce 4-1 to uh, and then rolled right into the, uh, the ice ball, as you mentioned. And you beat Lovejoy there, a district opponent. Any Correct. hesitation about playing them in that pre-district tournament? There was initially, uh, and then I saw what they, th what they put out there on the field, and, uh, and we came out and we pretty much handled them um, in, in the, the ice ball tournament. So it made, made me and made a, the girls a lot more confident going into the, uh, the district matches against them as well. Well, as you, were, you wrapped up the, the tournament and any pre-district play, before district started, uh, what were your reasonable expectations uh, going into district play? I mean, you knew it was going to be a tough district. Well, I knew it was going to be brutal, and it was. Right. Uh, McKinney High, Wiley East, Wiley, Prosper, they're all top quality um, teams and I knew that going in you know based upon my experience with with Prosper I knew that they would be a challenge this year uh, and then knowing what Wiley East and Wiley did last year in the playoffs I knew that they were going to be a challenge and then uh, you know McKinney uh, going and doing what they did in the playoffs last year as well I knew that that was going to be a, a brutal brutal district for us um, so our my expectations was were to Make the playoffs. Do whatever we had to do, do whatever we could do to, to get into the postseason. And that was an expectation, and that was our goal. All right, now, Coach Mendiola, you guys kind of had a rough start to, we did. to the season. Oh, we and did. four. I oh, mean, and four. Were you worried at all? Of course, you know, yeah, that I was crimson in the back of your head. But uh, I knew mostly from my part, I was making player changes within uh, the playing field that were not working out for us. So I knew. I'd eventually, I had to find that perfect combination. So uh, I was worried, but not, not that much. But. So you were still confident you'd be able to figure something I out? I was hoping, yes. You know, I didn't have that much uh, big confidence. You know, I was hoping we could uh, turn it back around. So yes. Now, you started District 10-5A uh, play with two mm -hmm. losses. With two losses. Then you have to travel to McKinney, mm -hmm. and that's always obviously a big rivalry game. Yes. Things get emotional. And you went down a player, mm -hmm. but you ended up tying it and sending it to, to PKs in a shootout. We did that, and uh, I think as the season went along, the boys took off from that game. They realized they it was, in in their words, their their best victory that they had had. You know, especially against the rival. So that initiated, uh, in in my opinion, a, a huge comeback and just turning the program back around from the losses into the wins. So. Well, so the McKinney game's nice turnaround for mm -hmm. you. It gets you guys really going yes. in the right direction. Were there any other games in district that you think helped show you the, the medal that that team was made of? You know, I, well, in the second round, especially because we came back around and uh, continued, uh, we only lost to uh, Wiley East, and then that Prosper victory at home was, uh, was another uh, huge victory for us. So. That kind of solidified us in, in, in second place, and we maintained it throughout the, the district. Yeah, I remember looking at the standings near the end of the first round, and 
McKinney North wasn't in the playoffs. I know it. And then from that point on, you guys just became, you know, a force. I know. I, looking at goal differential after the two games, we were in eighth place. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And to so, wind up in second in, in second the place. playoffs. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Coach Lovell, you guys started out district play one and three. And, again, you mentioned you, you, you've got in your district McKinney that was a 5A team last year. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, that, those groups moved up to 6A. But they were 5A. They went to the regional final. Also, you had Wiley East state finalists last year that outplayed Vandegrift but just Correct. lost. Right. And, and then Wiley's got this insanely good keeper back there. I don't know how you scored, but you scored three on her. So, I mean, that had to be a high point, right? It, it was. And if you ask any of the girls on the team, what one game stood out to them this year? And it's not – they're not going to say – you know, a 9-0 victory against Denison or a 6-0 victory against Sherman or 3-0 victory against Lovejoy. They're going to say that 3-2 to two win against Wiley the first round of district just because how everything just – it just it came together. You know, the, we, we led into that, into that game with, uh, with Denison and Sherman, so it, it allowed us to gain some confidence and be able to get uh, – get down what we wanted to do on the field, on the ball. And, and when, we, when we came out the very next game in, uh, at Wiley, it seemed to all come together, you know? Yeah, they had their opportunities. Yeah, they're the, a good team. They're bigger than us. They're faster than us. Um, but it was just, it was in the cards that night. And it was, it was one of those things. It, it, was, it was a fun, fun game to watch, uh, to be a part of. And they'll tell you that as well. Well, and plus, there might be a little bit in there also that McKinney didn't score against them either game. And you guys scored three in that game, so that's pretty impressive, too. Well, we didn't get one on them in the second round, so, you know, know. things I changed. <laughs> yeah. You got three total, yay. Right. <laughs> um, now, Coach Mendiola, tell us, <clears throat> tell us about this first, uh, first round of the playoffs by district. You had to take on uh, Frisco Liberty, is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes. Walk us through the game. How did it flow? Did you feel confident? Wasn't it tied 1-1 one, one at half? 1-1 one, one at half. And, I mean, tell uh, us about the first half. Were you feeling good? Um, I was, but I noticed we were struggling a little bit on the back. They, were, uh, they have very good skill in, in sending those long balls, you know, whether it's from the opposite uh, field or whatnot or from the back. But they were playing those long balls, and I realized, you know, we had, I had to drop one of my players, Kyle Biggio, drop for me and uh, change a little bit of the uh, momentum, you know, dropping them back and receiving in front of them instead of having to chase. So that – that put us in a good position, and of course, uh, that's when we came up and, and got that one go initially. And who scored and, the goal uh, for you? That was Yusuf Salah. All right. Yeah, he did. He did very good. He's uh, he's actually a forward, but played for us in the back. Uh, I like this. I've always liked his strength. Uh, you're not going to get around him uh, physically. You might uh, make a pass and whatnot, but uh, if you want to take him one out, he's going to give you a good fight. So I like him, and I dropped him in the back. So yes, it was uh, one one at the half. And um, uh, unluckily, you know, we couldn't come up with another one. They scored one and, and held that, started killing the clock there at the end and uh, kept us out of the net. Well, what did you tell the guys at the end of the game? I mean, they had to be heartbroken, but uh, uh, a great turnaround. I mean, the start of the season yes. to where you ended, I, hopefully they were happy about that. Yes, yes. And, of course, you know, when you lose a playoff game, it's, it's never easy. But uh, and I, I didn't want to say anything negative to the boys because the, the bottom line was, you know, they're already down, you know, from the loss. So I mostly told them, guys, to be proud of themselves, to be proud of their accomplishments. It wasn't easy coming out of the district to make the playoffs, and that in itself was a, a huge accomplishment for me. Now, do you have any seniors that are going to play in college? There's a couple. I, I, I think Matthew Garza is looking at going uh, at the junior college, and I know – there's another one that might, but Kyle Biggio is going to Texas A&M. He's going to play club, so he's not necessarily going, as you would say, uh, to play college right. soccer. And I think that there might be another player uh, that are doing that. But overall, uh, just, uh, just a few of them. But he still hasn't gotten soccer out of his system. It's no, still I, don't, his blood. I don't think he can get that out. I don't think he's ever going to get rid of it. He's a very good soccer player. Now, uh, Coach Lovell, uh, for the first time in a long time, the Lady Broncos or the Lady Bulldogs missed the uh, playoffs. Right. Um, it's been a long time. What do you, how do you pick up from that? I mean, what, it, what do you tell the girls now, here's how we go from point A to point B so that next year we go back to our tradition? 
Well, the tradition of making the playoffs and the tradition of winning um, is, is secondary to uh, what we do at McKinney North on a daily basis. Um, you know, what we do there is, and what I really saw this year, in the face of such adversity, in the face of such uh, disappointment, you know, as the season was going along, we saw, you know, we lose to Prosper 1-0 to zero at their place. And then, and then we have the back-to-back -back games against uh, Lovejoy because of the weather. Lovejoy, where we had to fight like dogs to win that game. Uh, and then the very next night, we have to face McKinney High. You know, in, in the face of such challenge this year, I think the girls really continued to uh, play with character, play with heart. They're very passionate about what they do on the field uh, and off the field. And, you know, that's, that's what is going to continue, you know. Uh, hopefully, you know, the tradition of making the playoffs will, will you know, creep back in there next year. Uh, and I believe, I believe in the girls that, uh, that are returning, and I believe in, in the coaching staff at North, uh, that if you know, we, we do the things that we're supposed to do, teaching the technical part of the game, uh, making them more aware as far as soccer players on the field, uh, work on the, the other things like speed and agility and, and strength, you know, everything will hopefully at one time come back together. So you didn't let them get down on themselves. You kept pumping them up, let them know. Hey, Absolutely. You gave me everything you could every game. Absolutely. Um, and do you have any seniors that are going to be playing next year in college? Sabrina Martino is going to be playing at the University of Incarnate Word. All right. uh, she has scholarship to play there, um, but that's that's the only one. But she's contributed to your program for four years, right? Four years. I mean, she's been a warrior. Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding young lady. Outstanding player. Uh, you know, she, she deserves that opportunity to go play at the next level because she can. Uh, she has that ability. Uh, I believe that we have others that are seniors that, that have the, the ability to move on and play at the next level as well, but they're choosing other paths. So can't fault them for that. No. Now, Coach Mendiola, briefly, what do you need to focus on for next year to go, not just, not just to the by district round, let's go to the area round, let's go further next year. What do you think you need to focus on? It's that speed of play, you know. Um, when we went into the playoff game, I realized, you know, the game is uh, a little bit faster. And if we don't work at it, you know, we're going to end up at the same place we were this year. So speed of play, you know, receiving the ball, playing it faster, and pushing it forward. So speed of play. Speed of play. All right. Uh, that's the McKinney North soccer coaches. We have Lance Lovell and Coach Manuel Mendiola.